Hello, okay, people. Welcome back to Global Happenings today. We're so excited to have you again. The Zambara State Governor has taken another very decisive state against Bando Tree in Zamfara State. Now, this is coming few days after he empowered his people to go get themselves a weapon to dis- defend themselves. And, uh, you know, when he said that, a lot of castigation criticism came up. Some people supported him. For example, Christian Association of Nigeria said, well, that it, there's nothing new about government calling on the citizens to get weapons, you know, to defend themselves. Others say that uh, his statement was a pointer to the fact that we are already in a failed country. But from the military or security perspective, it was actually a wrong move by him. But this time around, he has decided to put up a new move that will enable them to put on that serious check, you know, on, on put serious punitive measures on those who are disturbing the peace of Zamfara State. We are going to be looking at the latest step that he has taken and also look at the reactions of Nigerians in this respect. Now, according to the news, the Zamfara State governor, sorry, I'll take that again. And according to the news, the Zamfara State governor, Governor Belo Matawale, has signed anti banditry and other related offenses bill into law, prescribing death penalty for the convicted bandits and other related criminals in the state. The law, which comes into force with immediate effect, was signed into law on Tuesday, June 28, 2022. Speaking after signing the bill, Matawale said the law formed part of measures to tackle banditry, kidnapping, and cattle rustling in Zamfara State. The law, prohibition and punishment for banditry, cattle rustling, cultism, kidnapping, and other incidental offenses 2022 was passed by the state legislatures on Monday. According to him, today we have signed the bill on prohibition and punishment for banditry, cattle rustling, courtism, kidnapping, and other incidental offenses 2022. You may recall that on Monday, I inaugurated four security-related committees as part of our counter banditry initiative. Formation of the committee is aimed at ensuring effective implementation of the security measures being taken to end the over-decade-old banditry and other security-related challenges. The governor recalled that he has earlier signed Executive Order 7, 8, 9, and 10 that provided the legal instrument and operational guideline for the committee, stressing that the most fundamental focus of governance anywhere in the world is security. Zamvara State, under my watch, will continue to explore all possible remedies to apply it. Those making insinuations about our decision to support the right of community members to self-defense against ruthless attack by bandit ought to take into consideration the scale of the problem we are facing. They should take into account the plight of innocent people who are maimed, killed, and kidnapped every day in various parts of the state. The governor said that the state community protection guard were not different from the civil joint tax force. GTF in Brano and Amotegun in the southwest sub-region, saying our move is particularly significant considering the fact that there is currently no part of the country that is not facing one form of insecurity or the other. Our conventional security forces are operating in various theaters ranging from south east to southwest, not east to north central, heroically battling with varying degrees of security challenges. They are not only overstretched, but also lack enough modern equipment to prosecute counter banditry and insurgency warfare effectively. Wow, quite interesting. Before they would put full stop to the first instruction he gave about self-defense for his own people, the man has rolled out another one. But, you know, one of the major issues that we have in the country is the issue of executions of some of these um, good policies that have been rolled out. People who rented policies that have been rolled out. 
You know, insecurity has been topmost in the northern part of the country, and um, any serious-minded governor or serious-minded government leader would take into consideration every available legitimate step to ensure that banditry is stopped. And I think that is what um, Zamfara State Governor is trying to do right now. And uh, for me, uh, he needs to set up a committee that will ensure that everything that he has said is carried out to the letter. Now he's talked about the issue of death sentence for anyone caught in banditry and all of that. Now, who are the people that will carry this out? Yes, we know it's in the judiciary that this will be carried out, but how effective will this policy be? Because um, in Nigeria, we have very good policies, but implementation has been the issue. Some time ago, uh, a friend of mine attended um, uh, a finance workshop, and according to him, since he works in a reputable place, he was like, when I go there, I'm going to tell them there are flaws in their internal policies, as accounting policies and internal, uh, how do they call this, um, operational policies, internal operational policies of the government, which has made corruption to have a, a, a sweet swim in the system, that he's going to take out time during the workshop to tell them things that he has learned in the past, which are very effective, some internal control measures that is effective in controlling the flow, the inflow and outflow of money and will stop unnecessary uh, corruption in Nigeria. But shockingly, he said when he went to the um, workshop, finance workshop, what he knew was a tip of the iceberg to what the government have put on play, put on ground to regulate financial dealings in government parastata. He said he was shocked. My God. When he went there, actually went there to say, when they, 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 they will give summary of what they are going to talk about, he will also ask to, for an opportunity to talk on some key issues that, if adopted, will help the government. But by the time he went there, they knew all these things. So he said he saw document. He was like, what? The government, knew. He, he actually went in there and learned so much, which means they are already laid down policies in all facets of life, as it has to do with Nigeria, it's already on ground, well prepared and kept. But implementation has been an issue. Implementation has been an issue. Unfortunately, you know, there are some people who are quite special. You don't have to touch them when they get involved. Fairly recently, we saw a video that was making the rounds and talked about uh, what uh, Samuel Lu in Lagos saw some Fulani guys who were driving bikes. Run, they said they should go after them, but before they knew, they ran into the barracks and all of that. Uh, when they tried to get them, and they, they were stopped. And you know, a lot of stories. You know, I saw the video some time ago yesterday. Also, I was like, I don't know how true this is, but if it is as true as I've heard, then we have to perfect this thing come 2023, that everyone is at the same level. There is nobody that is better than the other person so that the arm of the law can come upon anyone who betrays or violates it. You understand? So uh, what Matawali has done for me is a good step in the right direction. And we are hopeful everything will, uh, if, if it gains a lot of success there, I, I, I believe that it will spiral into all the states in the northern part and also the entirety of Nigeria. We'd like to leave it there. What's your standpoint on this issue of dead, dead sentence on those found guilty of banditry and other criminal activities? Do you think that his move uh, will go an extra mile in reducing at least to the barest minimum the rate of crime in Zamfara State. Let's interact now.